In the United States, people have welcomed the conviction of Derek Chauvin for the murder of George Floyd last May. The unarmed black man's death at the hands of police shone a light on racism and its impact on millions of Americans. Lawmakers and corporations are trying to address the centuries-old problem, but as Paolo Montecilio reports, the struggle is far from over. Jury number 91, are these your true and correct verdicts? Derek Chauvin betrayed little emotion as a jury found him guilty for the murder of George Floyd. Outside the Minneapolis courthouse and across the U.S., crowds erupted in jubilation. Black power! Black power! Floyd's brother, Philonese, said the verdict was a relief. We won't be able to breathe until you're able to breathe. Oh, that's yeah. right. Today, we are able to breathe again. Oh, yeah. U.S. President Joe Biden has also welcomed the conviction. He says everyone's focus should turn to addressing the systemic racism that plagues America. The guilty verdict does not bring back George. But through the family's pain, they're finding purpose. So George, George's legacy will not be just about his death, but about what we must do in his memory. Corporations are already taking steps to correct inequalities that have disproportionately affected African Americans. For instance, Minneapolis-based retailer Target announced this month that it's spending $2 billion until 2025 to get more products from black-owned businesses onto its shelves. In October, J.P. Morgan unveiled a five-year, $30 billion pledge to help minorities get affordable housing and start their own businesses. And in June, Apple said it was investing $100 million in a racial equity and justice initiative for the black community. Meanwhile, the U.S. House Judiciary Committee approved a bill on reparations last week. It's a historic first and seeks to establish a body to study the lasting effects of slavery and possible government remedies. We're hidden in the corners of this nation of those of African-American heritage, the descendants of enslaved Africans who have felt uh, the sting of disparities. The bill's proponents admit its passage is unlikely. Polls show a vast majority of Americans oppose reparations. And there are plenty of other reminders that the Black Lives Matter movement can't afford to rest. On the same day Floyd's killer was convicted, police in Ohio, responding to a domestic disturbance complaint, shot dead a black girl. Her name was Mikia Bryant and she was just 16 years old. Paolo Montesilio, TRT World. Let's get more on this now with Carol Boyce-Davies in New York. She's a professor of Africana Studies and English at Cornell University. Welcome back to the program, Professor. Now, despite the compelling evidence and testimony that we heard during Derek Chauvin's trial, this outcome was far from certain. Can I start by getting your reaction to the guilty verdicts? Well, for um, I teach students of a variety of ethnicities, backgrounds, and so on. White students repeatedly say that they never have this kind of encounter with policemen uh, that happened to Dante Wright, for example. They're told, you know, do better and go home, whatever. Um, so we, the question we have is why that big anger when they confront a black person, right? The, the virulence, the hatred, the, the determination to smash people to the ground, to shoot them, to suffocate them, and so on. And the answer is, of course, along the lines of what the president in, indicated in, in his um, talk yesterday, where he said that the U.S. needs to do better. So systemic racism is the answer. The history of racist policing is the answer. And the need to really find ways to um, really get at and remove this stain that we we uh, continues to popularize um, U.S. Um, international culture because people around the world, as your audience and others, are looking at this and seeing if this is the place that indicates that it has the most advanced democratic structure about what's going on. So for me and for my students and for a range of my colleagues and friends, it is that underlying issue mm. which uh, still has to be addressed. And we are happy for the family of 
uh, George Floyd and, you know, particularly his little daughter and his siblings. We're happy for Minnesota that this was a one victory, right? But it was so obvious and so blatant. And this is why people say they, they realized that there was going to be a conviction of, of uh, Chauvin, who incidentally did not look remorseful at all. He seemed to look arrogantly at the cameras consistently. So one gets a sense that he does not see this as a problem, did not see his actions as something that he needs to be regretful about. So it's all these complicated underlying issues, the disproportionate ways in which black populations and others are treated, uh, of minority populations are treated by the dominant culture mm -hmm. and how this impacts the view of the United States in a larger international context that for us, and of course the national context, uh, and the ongoing treatment of black people, that for us is the major issue. Now, several corporate leaders were quick to respond in the wake of the verdict. Everyone from Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg to Microsoft President uh, Brad Smith to the Chiefs of Target and General Motors, they all welcomed the verdict as well. And they also said that uh, there's still a long way to go, to your point, in terms of uh, addressing this issue of racial injustice. What can corporate America do to actually tackle this issue? They can do a lot, and I'm happy these are good steps forward. The, press, the question is that systemic racism is just that. It runs through every aspect of the society. So at the economic level, it's there as well in terms of disproportionate wages paid uh, to black people and white people, people living still in really substandard uh, conditions, not really getting remunerated properly in terms of wages. So that's one. And investments by companies and black businesses needing to really get uh, portions of, of the so-called American pie, larger portion or not from what they're getting often is none at all, right? Um, so the question of the systemic racism has to be addressed at every single level. So corporations, yes, that's one level. The wage scales, yes, that's one level that the governments and the states have a right to really, um, really quickly find ways to ameliorate. Educational levels, where we are, the universities are doing that in creating anti-racist curricula and societies. Cornell is working on that exactly right now. Um, of course, we're pushed back from some faculty, but many students and others embracing the need to move forward. So I'm saying every single level in a systematic racism analysis, every single level is implicated. Education, economics, policing, for sure, right? Yeah. The legal system, the court system, so that there's not a double way of handling um, injustice in the United States. And really looking at gender as well, indicating that this young woman who got killed yesterday at the same time um, that you have the, the um, guilty verdict for Chauvin indicates that this is a larger problem. It's a policing problem. It's a racism problem, systemic racism problem that runs right through the U.S. and is its fault line. That's the basic fault line that they have to address. Okay, Professor Carol Boyce-Davies, we will have to leave it there. But thank you so much again for joining us on the program.